Now we are deriving the magnetic field due to a toroid solenoid. What is actually a toroid? If you take a wire and it is like this, then we call it as solenoid. Let us visualize how a toroidal solenoid could be. So this you are seeing that there are many spirals. You consider that this is a straight long solenoid. Now if I make it a loop, then this becomes a toroidal solenoid. It is also known as endless solenoid. Now here, when, we, when the current is allowed, you can observe one inside portion, the second one outside the solenoid, third in the within the solenoid, this. So three regions we are going to consider and we will see what is the magnetic field in all the three regions. So for that, let me draw a diagram which will convince you clearly. So this is the uh, toroid solenoid. We are considering one loop inside. So let's say that the ra radius of this is R. The radius of this loop b small r. Now we are observing r is less than r and then we have to do r is equal to r and then r is greater than r. So this is my first loop. This is my second loop and outside this is my third loop here r is greater than r now for the first loop it is very easy again we have to take integral over b dot dl and it should be equated to mu naught times of i the current threaded in we are considering the current is in this spirals so what about the current in this loop is zero therefore as this is for first loop as i is equal to zero b dot dl is also equal to 0 therefore dl cannot be 0 therefore b must be 0 so this is the inner loop that is this is first loop now let's do for the second loop in the case of second loop in this current is also there that is I current we have allowed through this solenoid therefore and B and DL are in the same direction therefore we can write B integral over DL is equal to this I again caused by n number of turns therefore mu naught Ni therefore B times integral over dl can be written as 2 pi r mu naught n times i now i wanted to know b therefore mu naught n by 2 pi r times i 
So we can consider again this is number of turns per unit length. Therefore, B is equal to mu naught times of Ni. So this is in the second loop. Second loop means which is inside the windings of solenoid. Now if you take the third one, again we have here i is not equal to 0. Because this entire loop is also having the i, this current which is passing in this uh, toroidal solenoid. So i is not equal to 0. But what about the observer observes, suppose this is the extended portion of this solenoid let's consider if somebody stands here and if he observes that the current is coming out and then again it is going in again it's coming out then again going in so the net current that he observes is zero therefore the net magnetic field because of this total sum of the currents going in is equal to going out, the magnetic field becomes zero. So this in this way, in the third loop also, it is zero. So only in one loop, the that is interior of the this solenoid only, the magnetic field exists outside and this inner portion or outside portion there will be no magnetic field so b exists only in the second loop which is equal to mu naught times of n i where small n represents n by 2 pi r whereas b in first loop and b in third loop is 0. So this is the derivation for solenoid. The solenoids can produce strong magnetic fields. The toroidal solenoids are used in synchrotrons. This is applicable in synchrotrons because in synchrotrons we have to use larger magnetic fields. Those larger magnetic fields are possible just because of this electromagnets only in the form of solenoids. The solenoids are also used in televisions. The stra straight solenoids like this are used in television circuits and then in synchrotrons the solenoids straight and the toroid solenoids are used the combination of both the two are used